Welcome back to the Sports Source. This segment brought to you by Games and Things. Football season begins in just a couple of weeks, folks. Thank goodness. Don't sit in those old chairs for one more fall. Get rid of that couch that's so low on the ground you need a rope to get out of, the, <laughs> out of it. Uh, get new home theater seats. It makes a real difference in your room. You'll enjoy them. You'll be comfortable. You're, you can't run your friends out. They're going to want to sit there and stay in those chairs. Uh, Games and Things. Check them out at OurGameRoom.com to learn more. Nobody has a better selection in East Tennessee than Games and Things. All right. First of all, I don't think Tennessee or any SEC school is on the verge of leaving the conference. This is a strictly <laughs> hypothetical uh, exercise. And the reason being, we spend a lot of time, I spend a lot of time, sitting here saying, oh, these greedy scumbag schools, <laughs> leaving tradition, screwing over their players, screwing over their fans, look at what they are doing. And then it dawned on me, what would this school do if the <laughs> situation was reversed? Uh, so I'm going to give you a scenario here. It's not that outlandish, but if the, if the way things keep going. Now, the, the Big Ten is already going to be making more, more money than you. They're going to renegotiate their contract before you do with, with their media contracts again. They're up before SECs are, so they'll make more then. And they've already added Oregon and Washington, so their money will go up, you would think. Mm -hmm. So they're going to be making more than you, uh, and they're already making more than you, but they're going to make even more. If, they, if the ACC fell apart, which is also a possibility, and you yeah. want North Carolina and Virginia, but they say Big Ten's more money. We could take our Southern recruits, go win in the Big Ten. Instead of playing Alabama every year, we'll go play Indiana and Purdue. <laughs> they could go up there. Let's say you don't get North Carolina Virginia here. They go there. Let's say Notre Dame jumps in up there. And the Big Ten says, we got one last slot, Tennessee. Now, that wouldn't happen because you don't meet their academic standards. But if they came to Tennessee and said, $35 million more dollars a year. Keep in mind, Florida State's squawking about leaving because they can't lose. They can't fall $30 million behind the SEC. They're saying that. Right. If the Big Ten offered Tennessee $30 million every year to come up there, extra, more than what they're making now, would Tennessee leave to go to the Big Ten? Without question. Without question, they would. And it would be the, the right thing to do. Look at the history of so far who has left conferences and moved along to other conferences. They're all in a better spot than the teams that didn't leave. Money-wise. Right? None, none of them win loss wise Oh, yeah. Right? Money-wise, money -wise. absolutely. And, and it's also survival right now because you don't want to end up in the Pac-12. You don't want to be part of the ACC and Florida State and Clemson and North Carolina and Virginia are gone, right? You don't want to be left there. So if you have the opportunity to move, like let's say SEC is completely in bed with the ESPN. Let's say their direct-to-consumer thing doesn't work because the first yeah. two streaming ch uh, channels they created didn't work, right? Mm -hmm. Losing money hand over fist. The Big Ten has four different places they're making money. Yeah, the SEC has one. Yeah, if you have a chance to go make sure that your, your team survives and that you can compete with the elites when it comes to the finances, I think you have to do it in this day and age. And if the Big Ten keeps getting bigger, keeps adding teams, they're also probably going to have more playoff bids. Yeah, well, more yes. than likely. So you get more playoff bids, more money. And if you're Tennessee, you could go up there with your Southern recruits. Which league do you think you'd have a better chance in? <laughs> I mean, granted, they got USC and Washington and Oregon and all that, but that's not the same as Oklahoma, Texas, Alabama, LSU, Georgia, Florida, Texas a &M. That's different. <laughs> um, what do you think? Do you think they would leave or no? Uh, I, I do think they would leave. I, I would find it hard to believe that they wouldn't. Now, could there be some scenarios that maybe prevent that from happening? Maybe they wouldn't be the first one to take – a big money offer, and maybe some of that money was not as legit as, as it expected to be. Maybe Kind of like that, the ESPN deal. Right, there you go. <laughs> so if there's examples of that being suspect, or maybe some other schools are like, ooh, no, we're not diving into the pool when there's hardly any water in there. So that could be one scenario. Um, another thing is, is that what, what does that new conference look like? Are you going to be in that travel spot to where it, it's you're you're not set up to win in that current major super conference none of these other schools yeah. seem to care about yeah that. really you're right that, so far that, i mean that's the is like, the bottom line is is tennessee any different than texas oklahoma right. nebraska usc maryland who founded the acc who just said see ya see all ya. our We're old rivals here. in our league we built we're going to big ten i, I, think, I don't know that they are i don't know right. that anybody in the sec I, th I, I think, think they're all the same first of all i'm gonna offer them five million dollars to go talk to vanderbilt try and get vanderbilt <laughs> out of the sec <laughs> i would be all for that <laughs> yeah oh, i'd be all for the that you know I, i'm an old time copy editor and i had a copy editor kind of genius tell me one time you never say never 
and you never say First Daniel because both of them are going to turn out to be wrong. <laughs> and, and, you know, the other thing I said is I keep thinking about the LIV and the money that they were offering employers from the PGA Tour that you're thinking, this guy's never going to leave. This guy's never going to leave. And then you throw out $200 million or you throw out $100 million, and what do they do? They leave. Yeah. So, and now Rory's made $150 million less than Brooks did over the last yeah, exactly. few years, right? Exactly. Uh, one interesting thing, I had somebody, I ran this topic by somebody, I said nobody would ever leave the SEC. Here's a little thing that I bet you don't know. For years and years and years, the big talking point for Mike Slive and then Greg Sankey was the fact that well, we don't have a grant of rights agreement in the SEC. We don't have exit fees in the SEC. Meaning, unlike all these other guys, yeah. we're not worried about anyone leaving. In 2021, without any fanfare, there was something added to the SEC's bylaws. You now have a 30 to $45 million exit fee, and you have to give two years' notice to get out of the league. Wow. That tells me that for the first time, time. the SEC is thinking, somebody could leave. I mean, why else do you put that in there? Why put, if, 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 especially after years of saying, we don't have that. We're so good. No one would leave us. Now, all of a sudden, if somebody leaves and gives a two-year notice, written notice, they get $30 million exit fee. If you give less than two years notice, it's $45 million. That's the way it works. And nobody knew about it. Christy Dosh found that for a sports business piece, and I just stumbled across it this week. I didn't see it get any kind of major coverage. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. So uh, that's fascinating. It's also fascinating nobody talked about it. They just slid it into the bylaws. <laughs> But it does show, I think, that in this current environment right. where everybody's just chasing the extra buck or survival, if you want to put it that way, anything could happen. I mean, I'm throwing out Tennessee. If the Big Ten were looking, they would probably look at the AAU schools in the conference. That's Florida, Missouri, Texas, um, Texas A&M, I think, is a AAU. They may or may not be. But there aren't many of them. You think Texas wouldn't go where the most money was? I think Texas would be out of here in a second if the Big Ten offered them 30 extra million. Well, they already had. They're they going are. again. They started all yeah, this. They're going again. But, but the other thing yeah, I think that I look at with this as well is can you compete at an elite level if there's another conference making 30 – their teams are making 30 to $40 million more per year than you are right now? And, and I don't know, because Clemson, Clemson doesn't seem to think so. Florida State well, doesn't have, seem though. to think so. They, they have, have been, yeah. But, but they're, they're, right now it seems like these schools don't believe that it's possible for them to be able to do that. We talked about this a little on last week's show. The problem is, when you look, how many of these teams have ever gotten better with the money? Yeah. The only one I can think of, and we, t we discussed yeah. it last week, Oregon. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oregon. And, and you could make a case that was more about Nike's branding than Phil Knight's money. Now, and uh, systems that Chip, that Chip Kelly brought yes, in and all of that stuff. exactly. Yeah. So... I don't. You could make a case that there's no school that's made all these extra millions. Again, Indiana was. Are they better now? I, I still, when I look at the top ten, we did it. Ohio State, Michigan, Georgia, Alabama, LSU, yeah. Southern Cal, Penn State, Clemson, Tennessee. You know what they all have in common? They're all top fifteen all time in wins. I don't see Indiana or Ole Miss or anybody else that's now making buku dollars. Well, I mean, three to five years ago, who envisioned this happening to the extent that it has? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. No, I don't think anybody did, yeah. right? I mean, you yeah. might have, as, as a worst-case like scenario, but I don't think anybody saw it coming. You, know, you might have seen the, the whole, we're going to have a national system and we'll have divisions and that kind of thing, but, but nobody saw the Big Ten would stretch from Rutgers to, to L.A. LA. Well, and that's why Mike Slive and the league really, you know, uh, bragging about the fact that no one's going to leave so we don't need a grant of rights. Well, there was a college football realignment in the in the way that it's happening right now back then. So it is a different landscape. You have to protect yourself. And so it's just so totally different. Although he was saying it when all these teams were talking about their grant of rights. <laughs> he was saying, yeah, we don't need it. And it was when all these – it was 2012 when uh, Maryland left right. and uh, – and Nebraska left, and Texas A&M and Missouri, and we don't have the grant of rights. So right. it, is, it has gone crazy. Yes, it's smart business to protect yourself. Right. I just think it shows in the corporate – in the, in the, well, there's a corporate office down there in SEC. Yeah. But uh, they're now thinking, hey, we got to have protection of some sort. Anyway, we'll see. I'm sure that any SEC school around would say that would never happen. We would never leave. <laughs> just like all those schools and those other conferences said that's not happening. We would never leave before they left. Okay. When we come back, we're going to talk about what you ranked as the biggest concern. We're also, there's a new bowl projection for Tennessee. And I want to know, would Tennessee fans prefer a better bowl game at a travel destination that's further away 
or a little lesser bowl game that's closer and easier to travel to. That's next. Come on back on the sports. Show.